Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today, we have a great topic. We're gonna to talk about load resistors. What are load resistors? Why do we need them? Anyways, it's a topic that more and more of you are running into, and, well, I thought today would be a good day to bring it up because we have a car in that, well, it's just not gonna work unless you have some kind of a load resistor. So it's a great example to demonstrate what it is and help us explain it. All right, let's get started. So today we have this Ram little van thing. So it's it's a Chrysler product. Inside we have the radio. For this we have a T harness connected to it. It is an IDATA DCH3. And what we have is the two wires coming out of the back of the radio. We've attached one of these cool Phoenix connectors to. And then these are the speaker wires going off into the doors and the A pillars for the speakers. But what we're concerned with is because we're going to be amplifying new speakers in here and we need to get sound out of this radio. We have a RTA here. So what that means is we're going to turn this on and I'm going to connect these speakers into here and we're going to see what it looks like under normal circumstances, meaning two speakers connected and whatnot. I have my speaker wires connected here. I have my RTA here. And what we're seeing here is the sound coming out of the radios and obviously we can hear it playing into the speakers. Disconnect the RTA, pull my speaker wires out. Turn the key off. Between testing, you unplug the radio and then plug it back in. This will forego having to wait the 10 to 20 minutes for the car to fall asleep and resync itself. Turn the car back on, wait for the radio to boot up. I've attached my RTA into the speaker wire outputs here. Radio's on, volume's up, and I have no sound, none at all. So as I turn up and down the volume, nothing is coming out of the RTA. So what happened? Why did it do this to me? Well, we took the load, the ohm load, the resistance that this speaker here is putting into the amplifier, we took that away. Well, the radio doesn't see that, and to protect itself for many reasons, it has shut off the output. Now, I say for many reasons because it really just depends on the manufacturer, how they built the amplifier. We won't get into all that, but it's a protection circuit built into it so that this just doesn't blow up. Cheap speakers. You know, go figure. How do we get it to turn back on is now the question. Well, we need a load resistor. And when this first started out, I meaning when we first ran into these problems way back when, we would use these things. These guys right here. And then we eventually switched over to these here because these would deal better with the heat that was generated from the load because just like a speaker, these get hot and you have to be real careful where you put these in the dash. And then manufacturers finally got on board and figured out that we should make a prettier version of this. And that's where audio control came out with the ALGDs, these guys right here. And they make three different versions of these depending on what's happening, depending on whether it's an amplified or a non-amplified or if it's just a basic system, meaning it just needs resistance for the amplifier, in which case you use these. We often talk about the LGD blues. These are perfect for F-150s because what happens in an F-150 is when that load isn't there, the tweeter just goes crazy because the amplifier isn't seeing the resistance that it needs and it doesn't shut off to protect itself. It just ramps up the t in the tweeter and you and next thing you know, you got blown tweeters. Now along with the blues, they make the greens, which is a 20 ohm Zobel resistor bank. And then if you have the amplified system, it's the gray, which is the 60 ohm resistor. Now they're not the only ones that have come out with something. Kicker makes what I like to call the resistor bomb, meaning it doesn't matter what you have going on. If you put this guy in, which is the KISS load four channel, they make a two channel version also. This guy here will turn anything on. Now in this case, we have the Dodge with an unamplified system. That puts us into this guy here. Let's plug one of these in and see what happens when we do that. Key is on, green load resistor plugged in, RTA plugged in. So now we see as we turn up and down the volume, we are getting signal back. This is fooling the radio into thinking that there's a speaker connected. So manufacturers have come up with some other ideas. In the future, Audio Control has new products coming out like this, LC2i. One of the things that makes this unique is that right here you'll notice this switch. It has the load resistor built into it. So if we flick it up here to 20, that is going to replicate the same resistance that the green LGD puts on it. You would need this if you have this. Now some manufacturers, back to kicker, on the side of a kicker key 
key, they have this feature right here that says radio detect. It's a little button that you push in. The key connected and the button pressed in, we have our RTA. If we come over to the amp, we can see now we have signal going up and down with the volume because this amplifier has the resistance built into it. Now have no fear, Kicker's not the only manufacturer out there that's doing this. Several other manufacturers are, and you just want to check the specifications on said amplifier when you buy it to see if it has it built in. Now we're not going to go too deep into this. This is a simple question that you guys ask, and we wanted to provide a simple answer. The harder question is, how do I know which one I need? If you're into that one, like, oh, I don't know, just get this. This, this will work on everything. Other than that, check to see if the amplifier has it. And with that, Fernando. On to the next one, guys. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.